think it's safe to say that we live in an era where gamers are more sensitive than ever to the possibility of spending their hard-earned money on a bad game. With the price of games this year reaching overall record highs, and with many of them being lace full of microtransactions, consumers have really entered an area, especially with everything else that's going on economically, of being very, very critical of their purchasing power. It's an environment like this that gave a game like Concord an absolute zero shot of success. And now Ubisoft is about to feel some pain as well, hot on the heels of the reasonably controversial and not all that successful launch of Star Wars Outlaws. A game that, much like Concord, received IGN's dreaded 7 out of 10 rating. A clear sign that even having the Star Wars IP behind it and client media won't be enough to prop up hype for the game. This is spark speculation by people who make videos on the internet, like me, about Ubisoft's share price and the future of the company and whether we could be looking at the collapse of another AAA studio over the next few years. And the people saying this are not entirely incorrect. If you look at the graph I'm going to put up now of Ubisoft's share price over the past week, it is correct to say that it has gone down. We know from previous experiences with successful and failed games that a lot of people in the financial industry when it comes to games will use the game's Metacritic score and its review scores to predict the success of the game, and thus the success of the company that made it. So Outlaws coming out with the dreaded now IGN 7 out of 10 review, along with other outlets also being critical of the game, along with commentary channels, is probably not a good sign for the future of the company. But the more interesting thing and the thing that inspired me to make this video is that when we actually zoom out from that week-long graph of Ubisoft stock price since the release of Outlaws and look at Ubisoft's share price over the history of the company, what we come to find out is that Ubisoft have really not been doing well since 2019. And I find this decline interesting because if we look through the history of Ubisoft's releases since then, we can kind of see this is when Ubisoft started releasing a lot of bad games. In 2018, Ubisoft had a massive year releasing Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and The Crew 2. These were massive games on both PC and console, but especially on console. This is where, as we can see from the graph, their stock price hit an absolutely massive record high for them. But as we can also see, it's been downhill since then. And this seems to me like one of those rare cases where my perception of the quality of the games a AAA developer is making and the stock price of that AAA developer are actually going hand in hand. I personally was not a huge fan of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And while I enjoyed Far Cry 5, I felt by that point the Far Cry franchise was starting to get a little bit old. I mean, I have Far Cry 6 on Game Pass and I still haven't played it because I'm kind of exhausted by the whole Far Cry thing at this point in time. But the interesting thing is if share price is anything to go by, and this is would be based off all of their reporting figures since 2019, Ubisoft are actually in a little bit of trouble because they just don't seem to be able to land a big hit. And they were really hoping, and surely their investors were also hoping, that Outlaws was going to be that game for them. And it really, really hasn't. And it leaves us asking what the future of the company is likely to be. If we look at Ubisoft's latest financial statement for 2024-25, their overall bookings that game sold is down by a few percentage points overall, with their largest market still being console and mobile lagging behind. They've got a few mobile games in the works that they've told investors are going to come out in 2025. However, they've really pinned their hopes for investors in this on two major releases for this year. And that is Star Wars Outlaws, which we've seen flop, and Assassin's Creed Shadows. Assassin's Creed Shadows, of course, has seen even more controversy than Outlaws did around the main character's model, with even some Japanese populist politicians calling for the government to investigate the company. Now, Ubisoft have always courted political controversy, let's be honest. For those of us that are old enough, I can still remember when Assassin's Creed Unity got pushed back from various members of the French government, so this is really nothing new. What is something new are the hard numbers. It's no surprise though, I think, to anyone that's bought a Ubisoft game over the past eight years, why things have been going badly for them. 
And number one is the games. Ubisoft have relied on mostly two really beloved franchises, the Assassin's Creed franchise and the Far Cry franchise. They have bled both of those franchises in a way that really, really to me mimics what Activision have done with the Call of Duty series, releasing such voluminous content that it's kind of at the point where I just block it out. I almost don't care when a new Assassin's Creed game came out. If I if the only reason that I know Assassin's Creed Shadows is coming out was because of the historical drama about whether a black dude was a retainer or a samurai. And whatever your opinion is on the Assassin's Creed drama, the reality is when the reason your game is talked about when it's a major AAA release is a historical and political drama on YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter, and not, you know, people being hyped about playing the game, you've got a problem. The only other two games they talk about in their investor report are Rainbow Six Siege, which I think is safe to say is a pretty good performing game at the moment. The studio's done a good job. And, you know, if you like Rainbow Six Siege, it's the kind of game that appeals to a very specific audience. And I think it's no surprise that that continues to be a success. But the only other game that they mention is Skull and Bones, where they talk about average revenue per user increasing over time driven by its new battle pass and exclusive bundle and say i mean it's what we all knew skull and bones was going to be a way to milk whales for skins but if you look at their share price it's clear that ubisoft need to do something to turn things around with a major release outside of just appealing to mobile games or new skull and bone seasons but you know me, I just wanted in this video to talk about some of the stories that have been circulating in the gaming media space at the moment about Ubisoft's share price. A lot of it is overblown. The real problem for Ubisoft is not that Star Wars Outlaws is going to tank their entire company. The real core problem for Ubisoft is that their main two franchises, Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, are no longer driving the hype that they could 10 years ago. When an Assassin's Creed game released 10 years ago, I think we all can agree that was a big deal. I wouldn't even know Shadows was coming out, as I said before, without the controversy. And with their model of just turn out Assassin's Creed games every few years, it's going to be really, really difficult for them to continue doing what they're doing, given the lack of hype. And if the internet is anything to go by these days, once you start getting negative hype around your games as a company, things can go downhill pretty darn fast. Look at what happened to Blizzard for a bit, and now they're kind of starting to pull it back. Diablo 4, I don't like it. I've made videos on this channel about how much I don't like it, but it's definitely a step kind of in the right direction. Look at War Within and World of Warcraft. I've been playing War Within recently. I actually like War Within. I think War Within is probably the best World of Warcraft expansion since Legion. Or if not, I might even be almost as good as TBC and Wrath of the Lich King. For its time in a modern era, it's pretty good. Blizzard kind of pulling it back, but Blizzard definitely were where they needed to do things like bring Chris Metzen back in get the story going back in World of Warcraft. Ubisoft are going to have to do something similar. They're going to have to do something to say to the fans, look, we can't just rely on a certain console fan base that's just going to go on the online store or go to their physical box store and just grab whatever Assassin's Creed uh, game comes out because it's not going to work anymore in the long run. I think people are just really exhausted by the way Ubisoft have done things. If you look for Steam reviews on their games, uh, most of them are negative and in many cases just because people are so sick of the ubisoft launcher i'm i'm i mean if you watch this video you probably are sick comment down below if you're sick of the ubisoft launcher because it's just a thing about the company that they've just managed to kind of grind gamers gears over the past decade and people have just kind of had enough and it's really going to be bad for the company moving forward so are they collapsing overnight no i think it's actually worse than that the company is kind of fundamentally not doing well from the inside over the long term if you like videos on gaming media commentary and drama uh click like and subscribe it always keeps me motivated with more dopamine as a small channel and i will see you guys in the next video